Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSGO News. Let's hop right into our first two stories today, all based around Brazilian CSGO. For all you fans out there, of course, you know many of the situations that have been going on these past few weeks involving Team Immortals, obviously losing KNG and Henny and Lucas currently on the bench. It does leave Steel and Bolts, and their current third player should be Horvy as he figures out his visa issues, and alongside that, their coach Zach can stand in whenever they want to. They, we should have two new Immortals members actually confirmed sometime soon this week. If not right now, we do have heavy speculation, almost very, very guaranteed, almost guaranteed so far. They're two newest players. Should be one from Ghost Gaming and one also from Tempo Storm, their Brazilian roster. So I'll go ahead and tell you guys that right now. The biggest surprise of all of this is allegedly one of the members they actually want to pick up is ZQK. Many of you guys have made fun of this guy in the past. We also had Launder tweet out this. You guys have seen him struggle the past few months when it comes to ADR and KDR ratings. And yes, he struggled on many of his teams. Although the one thing I want to point out and clarify for all of you guys who are wondering why they actually picked this player. Of course, a lot of those players, the Brazilian scene, are very well tied to one another. And they have all played it with at least some combination of other players out there in the past and yes Steel and Bolts have actually played with ZQK in the past all the way back to the Keedstar days back in 2015 all three of these members did play together so that's likely why they chose this guy they know him well they have good chemistry so although his ratings are not good on other teams he might play better with this Immortals roster now on top of that they also picked up allegedly Destiny from the Tempo Storm Brazilian roster I'll talk about them in a new story coming up here sometime soon guys but that should be the new five-man roster confirmed in the next few days if not of course they have their pick of the lot when it comes to Brazilian rosters everyone and anyone wants to join this Immortals team. They're probably willing to pay the best when it comes to Brazilian teams out there as compared to SK Gaming. They can pay the most and they're going to get the players they actually want to get. So as of right now, it should be Steel, Bolts, alongside them, Horvy, if he gets his visa issues fixed out. We'll have also Destiny and alongside that, ZQK, the most doubted player in the Brazilian scene as of right now. And that should make up your new Immortals roster. Now, bouncing off this though, and other Brazilian news out there, some controversy involving ESL in their rule book as alleged we had for the IEM qualifier. So to kind of give you guys a little background story of this, we actually had pre limbs for the IEM qualifiers and the winners of those closed qualifiers go to the actual IEM to uh, IEM LAN event in Oakland and so first off in those prelims in the final matchup of the prelims it was actually the Tempo Storm Brazilian roster versus a team known as Rise Nation. Now the Brazilian roster did beat out Rise Nation but because of future roster changes they can actually not compete at the IEM Oakland LAN event and so they decided with the ESL rulebook the way it is they can actually sub in their other roster. Their, if you guys remember they picked up two rosters a Brazilian roster and a European roster they can sub in their European roster roster who did not play a single preliminary match and actually fill them in for that spot at the, at the closed qualifiers for North America. So now we had a team, a European Tempo Storm team, who had not played a single preliminary match and then we had Rise Nation who was actually in the championship match for that preliminary round and they were the next best team behind the Brazilian Tempo Storm roster. They were not selected based off ESL rules. That organization had two teams. They could sub in their second roster for that spot. Now they actually did lose to CLG. They're not going to qualify anyway but that's besides the fact. Rise Nation deserved to have that spot and as right now we have updates from ESL that rules should be changed but yes they were allowed to if an organization has two separate rosters underneath their flag they can actually apparently allegedly sub in that current roster for a qualifying event like this for the IEM closed qualifiers so very unfortunate to see that guys Rise Nation a team who definitely had their chance and actually deserved their chance to qualify for IEM Oakland they did not get it though and another smaller roster change news out there of course many of you guys know the formerly all Swedish roster has now started a brand new Swedish roster that's actually Epsilon many of you also know in the past few months they've lost a lot of their former members. We also have Draken and Rez going to NIP. Barbar has also lost to higher tier teams. One of the more infamous uh, build teams out there, especially in the Swedish scene, especially in these past few months. And we also we saw that roster really fall apart because of that. They have now started over with a fresh new CSGO roster. Their first pickup being Jay-Z Walkings, the former opera of Renegades. Kind of an underwhelming roster going forward, but we'll see how they do, guys, as we do have a brand new Epsilon roster, and we'll see if they can actually be the build team they used to be. Now, on top of that, for our next segment, I'm not really sure why I'm doing a story on this, but I really wanted to help you guys and inform all of you how you can actually use CSGO skins to make more money when it comes to Steam credit. So first off, this is generally to all of you guys out there who have ever bought a Steam gift card. I'm telling you right now, do not ever buy a Steam gift card again and use websites like OP Skins. Now first off, I want to clarify this. I'm not being paid to say this. I'm not being uh, paid in any way to actually sponsor or promote OP Skins. There's other websites out there just like OP Skins, but I feel like they're probably one of the better websites out there. So instead of going out and buying a $50 Steam gift card where you get $50 in Steam credit, instead go to OP Skins and actually buy deflated CSGO skins. Many of you guys guys know on OP skins you can cash out your of course your steam credit CSGO skins into cash and of course that's why the prices on there are going to be heavily deflated and so you can get skins like the ones you guys have been seeing on screen for very discounted prices and actually sell them for steam credit and even when you do this with a 15% steam cut you can actually make a good portion of money and I think it's really proportionate the more money you guys actually are willing to spend the more money in steam credit you can get so instead of going out there and buying steam gift cards guys don't waste your time and instead use a website like OP skins and actually buy CSGO skins and then sell those for steam credit.
credit. So if any of you are saving up for a particular game out there, and let's say the game is $60, instead of actually spending $60 on a gift card to go get that game, instead go buy, let's say about $40 in CSGO skins on OP skins, and then sell them for over $60 in Steam credit, if that does make sense. For all of you guys out there, I know a lot of you probably already know about this strategy, but don't ever buy Steam gift cards, guys. It's literally a waste of time. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, a forewarning for all of you, watch out for tomorrow's episode in a couple days. I have some very special information for all of you guys, as well as a brand new sponsor. Uh, very thankful for all of you guys who watch these episodes and like and comment down below as well. It's because of you guys I can actually secure some sponsors out there to actually make some money for myself uh, to pay for some things in real life. So thank you guys all for watching. Seriously, do appreciate you guys for doing that. And that'll be a big announcement tomorrow. On top of that, though, I do want to close out today's episode about talking about Optic Gaming and their current state in CSGO. Many of you guys know, obviously, the newly acquired European roster. They've now all been in America in their Chicago households for several weeks, playing in ESL Pro League, other smaller North American tournaments, and have been doing quite well. Although many of you guys know that the common rumor out there is stigma around online matches. Most of their matches have, of course, been online against other North American teams. And for the most part, they've actually only played American teams and done quite well, which we would expect out of a powerful European roster, which they do have. We would expect just that. And even then, they haven't played against top tier North American talent too often, very seldomly playing against Cloud9, losing a few against them. Also, other teams like Liquid, very, very seldomly playing against teams like Optic right now due to the scheduling about ESL Pro League. We did, though, this past week and have a, another tournament, Cyber Power Gaming. It's a North American only tournament restricted to a very few amount of teams, and it's also a very small prize pool. We did, though, see Optic Gaming fall short to a team misfits, and people were repeatedly telling me, guys, don't worry, Jake, it's an online match. But I was very worried about this because Misfits is a roster we have seen struggle time and time again. This is actually one of their first wins in a long time, especially since Sean Garrett joined their lineup. One of their first wins in many, many months, and they did take down Optic Gaming in a best of three. Although it was online matches, this is the same Misfits roster who lost to the brand new Tempo Storm roster not too long ago. They were swept 2-0 by them. Again, more online matches, but it really does lead me to say, guys, I'm still very curious to see how these guys do perform on land against European rosters. We have seen such limited exposure from this, this actual team, a newly formed European roster against other European teams. I'm going to be very, very curious to see how they actually do when they do go to a LAN event and IEM Oakland might be their first LAN event as they actually managed to make it through the North American closed qualifier guys and have qualified for a spot at IEM Oakland and that will be a LAN event sometime soon. They took down Renegades in a best of three, two to one and they actually took down some other teams there as well. So although they did lose Cyber Power Gaming against Misfits, they bounced back the next day guys for IEM Oakland qualifiers and did beat a good looking team Renegades, other teams out there as well uh, did fall short to Optic Gaming. So going to be cool to see how they do. What do you guys think about this? I know all these matches are of course not LAN matches. We could see a whole new optic show up, but I'm very, very curious to see, and I'm going to be uh, a, little, a little bit skeptical, honestly, going forward until they can actually face off against the top tier European talent. As always, guys, hope you all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. I will see you all tomorrow in a couple days, and once again, thank you all so much for the great comment and feedback, guys. I'm going to try to reply to some comments this week, but it's really been hard for me. It's during midterm week, and so I have a lot of tests this week, and I really have too, not too much time to actually reply to comments, but don't worry, guys. Next week, I should be back replying to all of you. So thank you all for watching. As always, I'll see you guys all next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye. Oh, no, I'm Thanks.